we're going to look at modeling a piecewise function from a scenario. One of the most obvious places in your life where piecewise functions are used is when we have tiered pricing based on the quantity or number of users. Consider case lot sales found commonly at grocery stores. The normal price of a can of corn at my grocery store is 89 cents. But if you buy 12 or more cans, which is a case, then the price per can drops to 49 cents. And this is a piecewise function because there's a different price when you buy zero to 12 cans than when you buy 12 or more cans. Let's let X be the number of cans of corn that you purchase. So we can write this as a piecewise function. Now I've used capital P of X to describe this equation. We'll let capital P be the total amount paid for X cans of corn. And this piecewise function is made up of two pieces. It's 0.89 times x if we're between 0 and 12. So if 0 is less than or equal to x is less than 12. And then the second piece is 0.49x, that's 49 cents a can, if x is greater than or equal to 12. Let's use Desmos to help us sketch a graph of this function. Now you should already know how to do this, so why don't you go ahead and try graphing this in Desmos and sketch the graph yourself. Pause this video and come back when you're finished. And we're back. I'm over in Desmos and I'm going to graph y equals 0.89x and then I'm going to use the curly braces. 0 is less than or equal to x is less than 12. That gives me the graph for how much I will pay total for corn between 0 and 12 cans of corn. Now let's enter the price for more than 12. That will be y equals 0.49x and then we'll use the curly braces to indicate our domain, which will be 12 is less than or equal to x, or x is greater than or equal to 12. Either way, that works. Let me describe the graph for you. Our first line segment starts at 0, 0 and increases with a slope of 0.89. It ends at 12, 10.68, but with an open circle because we can't actually reach that point. The second line segment begins at 12, 5.88, that is, you can buy 12 cans for $5.88 and it increases with a slope of 0.49, which is a little bit lesser slope than the first line segment. If we use our finger to trace down this first line, you can see that at five cans of corn, you're spending about $4.45. When you get to six cans of corn, you're spending $5.34. And when you get to seven cans of corn, you're at $6.23, which is over the price you'd pay for a full case at that point. So if you're gonna buy more than six cans of corn, you might as well buy a case of corn. To sketch this graph myself, I'm going to start at 0, 0. I know the graph continues to 12, 10.68. Now I found that point by graphing 12, 0.89 times 12. In other words, I evaluated the function at 12 and found where the point would be and then drew an open circle there. So I'm going to plot a point at 12, 10.68. Remember that's an open dot and then I'll use a ruler to connect those two. It was a good idea to pull out something straight to draw these, maybe a student ID or a driver's license. There's the first portion of my graph. The second portion of my graph has an endpoint at 12 comma 5.88. That's just evaluating the second piece at 12. And it goes up from there. We can just find some other value on the graph to help us draw it. Let's try graphing that with about 29.82. 29.82 and 12 comma 5.88 and let's take a ruler graph those values and this one's just going to continue on to the right we'll assume we can buy as many cases of corn as we'd like now realistically we can't really buy a partial can of corn so this function would be a little bit more accurate if we wrote it as p of x equals two segments 0.89x if 0 is less than x is less than 12 where x is an integer and then the second segment would be 0.49x if x is greater than or equal to 12, where x is an integer. In other words, if I was to go back to this drawing and just plot out the integer values, we have 0, 0, 1, comma, something, 2, comma, something. I'm just going to put dots on the line at every integer value going up to 11, which is the last time I would use this first price. And then I'll do the same thing on the second graph. I'll start at the x value of 12 
and make an integer dot as I move up this line. And then I could go in and erase the original graphed lines, leaving myself with just the integer values. That's actually a more realistic graph of this function because we can't buy half cans or quarter cans of corn. Now I have a scenario that I'd like you to write a piecewise function for. I'm gonna read you the scenario first. A recycling company pays 50 cents per pound minus a processing fee of $10 for recycled aluminum cans if the total quantity of cans is less than 100 pounds. Above 100 pounds, there's no processing fee. So from 100 to 500 cans, they'll pay 55 cents per pound. At or above 500 pounds, the recycling company will pay 60 cents per pound, plus they will also give you a $50 bonus on the lot. So I want you to pause this video, declare your variables, and write a piecewise function for that scenario. Come back when you're finished, and make sure you're correct before you go on to sketch a graph. Okay, hopefully you've written a piecewise function for this. Let me go ahead and declare my variables first. I'm gonna let X be the number of pounds of aluminum cans. I'm gonna let capital P be the payment for X pound. And of course, that's in dollars. Now there's three pieces to this function. So I'm gonna start with P of X equals, and then the left braces, leaving myself room for three different pieces of the graph. Now the first piece, happens when I have less than 100 pounds. So I'm just gonna write if X is less than 100 off to the side. What am I getting paid? I'm getting paid 0 0.50 times X times the number of cans minus a $10 processing fee. So that would be 0 0.50 X minus 10. The next segment we have here is between 100 pounds and 500 pounds. And so that's 100 is less than or equal to X is less than 500. In that case, there's no processing fee anymore and we're paying 55 cents a pound. So that would be 0.55 X. Now at or above 500 pounds, so that's if X is greater than or equal to 500. Now above 500 pounds, the recycling company is gonna pay us 60 cents per pound. So that's 0.60 X. And then they're also throwing in a bonus of 50 bucks. So that would be plus 50. So those are the three pieces of our piecewise function. If you've gotten that far, now pause this again and see if you can sketch the graph. If I were you, I would use Desmos to help you a little bit. I've gone ahead and entered all of the functions and points in Desmos in the left-hand panel. First, I graphed the first line segment, y equals 0.5x minus 10, and then when curly braces, I put zero is less than or equal to x is less than 100. Now, I want the end point at 100. So the next thing I did was plot a point, an open point at 100 comma, and then I evaluated the function at 100. So I did 0.5 times 100 minus 10. I actually just entered that right into the right-hand coordinate of Desmos, and that gives me an open point at the end, 100 comma 40. The next line segment I graphed was y equals 0.55x. That's the 100 to 500 segment. So in braces, I have 100 is less than or equal to x is less than 500. Let me add that to the picture. Now that has a left endpoint at 100 comma, and then all I have to do is evaluate 0.55 times 100, which is the point 100 comma 55. On the right end of that line segment, I actually want an open endpoint. And for that, I evaluate 500 comma 0.55 times 500. And that open endpoint is at 500 comma 275. All right, now the third line segment is y equals 0.60x plus 50. To get my end point on this one, I'm going to plot the point 500 comma, and then 0.60 times 500 plus 50. That point is 500 comma 350. I'm gonna use all of those points I've found in the open and closed circles to sketch this graph. Now I've given you a set of axes where the X values range from zero to about 900, and the Y values range from zero to about 700. I'm gonna start by plotting this first line segment, which has points at zero comma negative 10, 20 comma zero, and 100 comma 40. So there's 20 comma zero and 100 comma 40, which is an open circle. I'm gonna grab my ruler and graph that first line segment. I'm even gonna add this point. This is the point 100 comma 40. 
All right, my next piece of graph goes from 100 comma 55 to 500 to 75. So 100 comma 55 would be about there to 500 to 75. It's going to be an open circle. And let's connect those with a nice straight line. And then finally, 500 comma 50. And then let's find another point about 600, 411, roughly. We're not going to get it that accurately, so 600, a little over 400. That'll give us another point to graph, and we'll draw that one continuing on to the right. We'll also label our axes, because those aren't labeled here. The vertical axis was the payment for X pounds in dollars, so let's add that. And the horizontal axis was the number of pounds of aluminum cans. And so you can see we have a nicely sketched graph of our piecewise function that came from this scenario about this recycling company. That came from our scenario about this recycling company.